Hello survivors and welcome to another video. In today's video I thought it would be very important to show everyone that it's actually possible to beat expert without using any leaves whatsoever. Now expert is a lot harder than hard or even easy so don't take this lightly it does revolve around a lot of RNG and also just good playing uh anyway so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do it on axel door i'll try and make videos on each of the characters doing expert without the tree but first we're going to start off with axel he is the first character we get anyway and i thought it would be easiest to do it so just so you can see there is zero done on the tree i've got 109 out of 109 tree, uh, leaves available everything is set on zero i don't have anything in my tree we're going to be using stormbringer all right, I've tried this you starting off with niggling. I've tried it with everything. Otherwise, uh, I found that Stormbringer works the best. We're going to be playing on Midgard because obviously on Expert Midgard is going to be the first one that you explore as well. And we're now going to go and kill things. Now, the way that the axes work is they fly upwards and then in a circle around you. So... The most important stats that we are going to be looking for are going to be duration, damage, and projectiles. Obviously, we want at least uh, six or seven projectiles if possible. Uh, if not, it's really not the end of the world. It's just it makes it a lot easier with regards to what comes when you ascend the axes. Now, I would recommend that while you're doing easy and uh, hard difficulty that you ascend the axes so that you are able to get both of the ascensions that are available for it. So we're going to keep uh, carting the monsters, obviously gaining ourselves XP. We do have a level. So here we've got area and duration. I'm happy with the duration, so we're going to take that. We'll take it again, but we will eventually start looking for damage. So damage and area, that's okay. And I will show you why you go for duration. So as you can see, when the axes last for longer, they land up spinning more around you. So you're going to land up hitting, oops, hitting things, uh, more things around you as well. So very important to try and get that duration up. Now, don't worry too much about uh, money. Don't worry too much about, you know, uh, all the, the boxes and things like that. That's all going to come in time. We do need to just focus on gathering as much XP as possible and surviving. So we're going to be doing that. We're going to go back up here and grab that juicy XP. We're going to get a couple of levels. And I am going to re-roll here. Duration is actually very good there. Oh, okay, we won't re-roll this one. And there we got some more damage, so we'll keep that one. And there is some projectiles as well as uh, more duration. So as you can see, it is now going further into the enemies. And that gives us more breathing room as well as uh, killing enemies. And unfortunately, I made a little bit of a mistake there. I should have waited. And I never, and that cost us two lives. So we are going to have to start destroying some boxes now and looking for some potions. But as you can see, it is obviously a lot safer for us to uh, walk now. We do just need to go like that, kill a bit of things, and then we just got to... You just gotta kind of uh, dodge all the enemies. Whoops, there we go, dead. Give us that juicy XP. We have 10 level ups now. So we want duration. We don't need the cooldown or area. Damage and projectiles. Damage and area is fine. And projectiles and duration is actually perfect over there. So we're gonna grab that. Okay, we grabbed a heart. So that means we have one more laugh as well. And as you can see, we kind of get like a, it nearly comes all the way around us, 360, but it will once we get that uh, second, that last duration on it as well. So that's what we're going to do right now. Seven projectiles as well. And now we can go and get ourselves that nice juicy uh, cooldown as well. So as you can see, the axes do a 360 around us. And now we pretty much safe for the rest of the run. So we did risk it for the biscuit in the beginning there. You don't have to be as risky as I was. 
you can land up uh, being a little bit more safe. But that was probably the most important part of the entire run, getting the duration and the projectiles of the axe so that it can do a 360 around us. So the rest of it's going to be a bit easy. If we get chests, try to focus on damage, uh, even a projectile, but uh, more damage than projectiles. We're not going to need more projectiles, so try to focus on damage if possible. And the axes will always spin around the first direction you were facing. So if you start throwing it to the left, even if you start walking to the right, it will always keep throwing them to the left. So just something to keep in mind with the axes. Until we ascend them, uh, we're going to have them rotating around us like this. But that's still fine. As you can see, we are pretty safe. We could even stand still if we wanted to. But we're going to grab cooldown. We're going to max the cooldown to make it so that the axes start spinning faster and faster around us. With uh, obviously doing more damage to enemies. We can collect seeds while we're at this. Uh, we don't have to focus on the seeds. Our focus is survival. That's so irritating. Okay, so actually our focus right now is to try and get another potion. Because one small wrong step in expert and you're gonna kiss goodbye. Alright, so we've got the three there. And one of the things that we're going to go for now is there is the... Uh, well, it's either Fury or Berserker. So we're going to grab Berserker. The reason we're not going Fury is we don't have enough life. Uh, it is very, very strong to grab Fury. But because of our life situation right now, it's just better for us to not take it. And we still need to grab uh, an HP, a life crystal, because otherwise, I mean a potion. Otherwise, we're not going to have a very fun time here. <laughs> Grabbing this relic over here that causes paralysis is actually pretty good for a little bit of a defense. It's not going to kill anything per se in the beginning, but what it can do is try and keep us alive. Uh, there is a chance for it to paralyze things, so uh, there is a chance that it will save us when something gets too close to us that we do not see. So, you know, that's a good option over here. The electric rune is what this relic is called. And also, if we can grab ourselves the magnet artifact, that would be even better. So that we have all the juicy XP that we haven't picked up just yet. Right, we're actually going to go grab this uh, artifact over here, the knockback artifact. And we're still going to go run around looking for potions. Now, although that uh, artifact there, I mean the relic there for 15 gold is really good. The attract orb, <laughs> the attraction fossil. The problem with it is it's 15 gold. That 15 gold is going to be used for something a lot better later down the line. That could be two relics inside the shop because there's a chance you get a relic for five gold in the beginning or whenever you uh, re-roll the shop. So do you want to go for it? Uh, I mean, it's up to you. You can. It is a very good relic, especially when you are a low level because you know you get the attraction. You're going to get a lot of XP out of it. So it is entirely up to you. You can go for it, but we are not taking it. We're going to risk it and see what we get in the shop. So we had six points. We're going to rush to Berserker. So we get that cooldown and attack speed perk as well. So now our axes come out a lot quicker and therefore we uh, can kill things also a lot faster. I am holding on to this nice little knockback rune or artifact sorry so that we can use it if we have to. Alright, so we have enough damage, as you can see, to kind of kill the elites very quickly, which is fantastic. 
and now we've just got our little friend over here you do just need to keep moving around with him don't run in a straight path because he does have that attack where he uh, sprints at you so try and run like like that I guess and he should be dead now All right, there we go, dead. And hopefully we get something decent. Unfortunately, we never. So what we are going to do here is we are going to reroll once. And we actually did get some decent things. We got health, we got boots, and we can grab a potion for more life. So the boots give us more movement speed that uh, Brew gave us HP, extra two hearts. So that was fantastic. I'm very happy with getting that. And now, why I said you need to ascend the axes when playing easy and hard is you need shooting axes. This throws all the axes at the same time in an area around you. So we are now going to grab that and we are now going to grab the extra damage. So we need one more skill point and we can leave Gnocchi's realm. And as you can see, we now throw the axes all around us. So now we've got free movement and we can actually grab this chest over here, which only needed 248 more monsters killed. <clears throat> what I should have done before re-rolling the shop is taken that magnet uh, artifact because that definitely helps you. Also, the second ascension that we get can either be on the axes or we are going to grab ourselves Negling the sword and we can do that. So we only have two ascensions because we don't have anything on our tree. But I would suggest when you have three leaves, the first thing you put your leaves into is to grab the map. As well as grabbing yourself the ascension shrine. So you get three ascensions every single run. It definitely makes you stronger and it definitely makes it a lot easier so that even before you fight the very first scavenger rat you have your axes like this already so it makes surviving a lot easier and it just makes it a lot easier to complete expert so for me i like going for the left side of the tree first i actually even now when i'm playing on uh, the 108 leaves i have unlocked I have maybe a little bit of cooldown in the tree or something like that. I think I've got it in the right side of the tree, actually, the green, and nothing in the red for damage. So I, I take a lot of utility. I feel like you get so much damage and cooldown and things like that during your gameplay that it's not actually necessary to get a two finish expert, but you can go for it to make your life easier, obviously but i haven't found the need to grab it so i don't really get it now these are terrible options so we are going to go like that grab some area of effect for the stormbringer and unfortunately we don't have a magnet for us for the xp so we kind of just gotta run around and grab it all we do have a movement speed oh that's cooldown tonic over here but it might reduce something else of ours that we need, like damage, which we don't really want. Anyway, we've got enough to evolve that, and now we're going to start working on Negling. So Negling, we want damage, projectiles, and then a mixture of cooldown and attack speed. Cooldown makes it so that after you have used all the projectiles, it goes on cooldown and it starts the cycle faster. Attack speed makes it so that your projectiles have less wait time between each other and you hit them faster, if that makes sense. So both are needed, both are very good. Uh, attack speed is more beneficial when you have a lot more projectiles so that you can get the cooldown started faster. But other than that, I think it is more important to get the attack speed i mean the damage and the projectiles also we're not going to worry about the area because we can if we wanted to ascend 
niggling, otherwise we are going to ascend the axes for the second time. If we don't ascend niggling, then you do want a little bit of area, because as you can see, we aren't even hitting anything. So we, we can look for area. If you do get some area, it's okay, especially in the beginning. But again, you do want to focus on damage, cooldown, and projectiles if possible. So use a reroll or two if you want. Otherwise, you can just, you know, random it and just keep hitting that space bar, hoping you get decent upgrades. It's just there for supporting damage, so if something gets close to you, you have that little bit extra damage as well. But we're just going to run around. I haven't really looked for the other shrines. I've always found it quite difficult to find them without the map. It's probably one of the reasons I love the map so much, is you're able to find all the shrines pretty easily. And uh, that is why when they brought the minimap in, I was extremely happy with that update. So, you know, something to invest into with your leaves is definitely grab grabbing yourself the minimap. Alright, so we grabbed ourselves some nice juicy XP over there. We got quite a lot of life as well, luckily, so we don't have to really worry if we get hit once or twice. But we do want all this juicy XP that is on the floor for us over here. As well as grab as much gold as possible for the next shop. Once we've gone to the second shop, if I can find or remember where that attraction fossil is, I can see it now, it is down below us, but we're not going to grab it just yet, we are going to wait again, because if we get more health uh, relics, or if we grab some damage relics, or you know, there could be better relics that we get, so it is definitely worth waiting to see what it is that we can get. And over here, four projectiles on the Negling is okay. Getting that damage and a nice area of effect is good for us. And we are then going to grab ourselves... Uh, we're going to stay on this side of the tree. So we will focus on the infinite whirlwind now because that gives us extra damage area and movement speed while it is active. So we'll do the attack speed and movement speed as well. Maybe we could go for a little bit in Thunder Armor. Let's just do that because we've got the spare little points. Uh, so why not just do it? The only problem and why I say you should grab yourself the Magnet Relic is when you get to a point like this, the obviously there is all this juicy XP that we weren't able to pick up. And I can guarantee you this is about five or six levels that we got sitting on the floor over here. And it would have made it a lot easier for us uh, to just get those extra XP, we would have been able to finish the Thunder Armor. You know, there are things you could do with it that really, really do help. But as you can see, we are killing the next mini boss dead. No problems there. And we are going to keep going. As you can see, we did actually get a lot of life over here. So we got another, what's that, one two life over there we can refresh the shop as well we've got even more life and we've got this helmet this helmet makes it so we take less damage so instead of the life it's actually better to grab that over there and we can grab this for a little bit of heals now we've got two options the first option is you can either go for long sword or the second option is to grab yourself the axe storm which means the axes are going to cast lightning three times and they each deal 24 to 28 more damage per lightning hit so we're going to grab the axe storm uh, if you wanted you can grab negling it's really preferential i mean you can go either or it's not such a big deal and we are going to max level the thunder armor as well just for that little bit of more defenses 
Alright, so now when we get our 15 gold, we can grab the attraction fossil. I just feel like we need to wait to get... Obviously, we landed up getting really, really decent relics in the shop this run. And it is very, very RNG based. So I like going for the life ones because then it gives me more breathing room to be able to be hit. And obviously that is something you do want to look for, especially if you are trying to unlock Helga still. We've got six, I mean seven of the eight heart containers. So if we landed up getting one more heart container somehow using a blue potion maybe or a green potion, then we need to kind of finish the game without being hit. Or at least as soon as you get it, it unlocks her. I don't think you actually have to finish the game. You just need to get eight heart containers in a single run with her. So you need to try and not get hit. And then you can grab yourself a Helga. Who will make any level much easier to play. Because her ultimate is just quite uh, strong. Alright, so we're going to grab this chest and this XP over here, and let's keep going. So we will grab ourselves some cooldown. We don't need the attraction, we will be grabbing the attract all fossil, the attraction fossil when we can. Obviously if we can afford it before the end of the run. Also try and pick up all the seeds because more seeds means more leaves in the tree for free. So we actually got enough gold for it now. We can try and start moving to it. I do know it was near the bottom here somewhere. And then we'll just move a bit to the side. And try and get the attraction fossil. Alright, so we seem to have lost it. Okay, we're going to use the heart because I want that magnet relic. Just before the boss, we will pop it. I need to just go grab it before we forget that it's sitting there somewhere. And then we don't actually need the attraction fossil now. So that's okay, that worked out for us. Obviously, if we run past it, we'll grab it. But we don't need it anymore anyway. So all's good in the hood. Let's just kill everything here. Let's make some insane cooldown because we actually got Berserk running and we've got the Tornado Ultimate running which increases all of our stats as well. So that's really cool. Also the more you upgrade the Ultimate the more stats you get. We had a 20 gold relic over here that we never saw the entire game. So that's kind of... Swack. <laughs> but it is what it is. We're still going to beat experts without a, a tree or without the meta progression. And I hope this guys, I hope this has shown you guys how to do it and... Uh, you know, just how... I mean, I can say just how easy it is, although I kind of nearly died in the beginning. But it uh, just shows you the very beginning is quite difficult, but once you get the ascension for the axe, then you kind of in an extremely safe space, and you just got to dodge all the area of effects of the uh, elites and the bosses. We kind of had a lot of XP sitting on the floor there, so we kind of just used that. And we're on the bus now. So we are going to... We've only got... I'm just going to level this up rather. We don't have enough points to get our ultimate up to maximum level. And we don't have enough to even... Maybe I got lucky. We got one more level there which allowed us to fully level that up. <laughs> and because we have movement speed boots, we are... Oh gosh, we got so many levels, we can actually go one level up there. And because we've got the boots for movement speed, I'm going to focus the next couple of levels on uh, 
attack speed or on the ultimate actually we got enough levels to level up our ulti the last time so that's fantastic when it comes off cooldown we will use it so we've got a little bit extra damage as you can see we are kind of killing him very quickly in the beginning uh, these are the paths that are a bit dangerous we do have to watch out for all of the uh, enemies that he spawns while moving because we don't want to get stabbed by his swords so you just got to continuously move use the ulti if it is on cooldown we're going to use it once he steps out of this which he did right now and then that allows us to just do the most amount of damage to him and get him to go into his next phase there we go now we need to dodge his ragnar sword attack which by the way by beating him on expert you get the sword attack which has a very decent uh, ascension a very interesting ascension actually and we landed up getting hit by one of the swords which is very unfortunate so he does start spawning more and more boss i mean more and more enemies you oh, that was a really bad example of how to pass that part of it but that's normally quite easy to dodge uh, maybe if he does it again now i can show you but otherwise he is going to die very very quickly now all right so he did use it again if i decided once once it's up in the air you can actually run through it and you are able to get there quite easily but there you go as you can see we did it we had nearly 2000 dps on stormbringer with 2.2 million damage done all of our relics were health and a little bit of survivability from the helmet and that's it you don't actually need many damage upgrades on your stuff the electric rune did a whole 7.8 dps our thunder armor did 19 they're just there for defense for that little bit of shock to the enemy but we did it it was a 25 minute run with expert complete without the tree being used so i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope this helps you beat expert with axeldor and always remember to com comment like the videos and if you haven't yet subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future and always remember keep safe survivors until next time cheers